Welcome to another episode of Rock Shovels and Manuscripts. I'm Rick, and this is definitely Steve. <laughs> we shared with you some really a philosophical statement last week, and that was that uh, we don't know what we don't know. <laughs> it's Steve? brilliant if you ask me. <laughs> I wanted to tell everybody about something I put up on Facebook, and it's actually a shameless plug because I'm on Facebook, and you can look for me and be my friend. I want friends. <laughs> okay, Steve. <Steven. laughs> but here's what I wrote. It, it got a lot of responses. We don't know as much as we think we know. If we don't know as much as we think we know, then some things we think we know, we really don't know. And if we really don't know what we think we know, how can we know that we know what we know? You know? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so if you hadn't figured it out, this is going to be a very fun episode of Rock Shelves and Manuscripts. Okay, now last week we talked about ancient technology. You want to continue in that vein? Absolutely. Okay. Over the last several episodes, we keep going back to the Great Pyramid of Egypt. It's just been something we've been talking yeah. about. I want to talk about that now okay. in more detail. And it, it's fitting that we talk about it because it was one of the wonders of the ancient world. Yes. It's still a wonder of the modern world. It is. This massive structure out in the middle of the desert yes. is just awe-inspiring mm -hmm. to this very day. Mm -hmm. um, it's one of the biggest buildings in human history. It's the oldest building in human history. It's believed to have been at least 500 years old when Abraham walked the earth. Mm -hmm. So if Abraham saw it, it was 500 years old at least at that mm -hmm. time, mm -hmm. which is just, you know, Abraham was 4,000 years ago. So to think that ancient right. man, who's supposed to be primitive, just crawling out of the mud, could make something, how did he make it? Mm -hmm. It's estimated to have taken 10 to 20 years to build. It has 2.3 million stone blocks in it. So if you were to plant one of those uh, blocks, you know, every hour, it'd take like 20 years to build it. <laughs> you know, 12 blocks placed every day. 20 years. It's crazy. For 3,800 years of modern history, it was the tallest building on the planet. 3,800 years. Wow. Yeah. The ancient Egyptians were just amazing. Mm -hmm. 455 feet high, 755 feet on each side. Well, a football field is 300 feet. Two football fields is 600 feet. You still got 200 more, almost two-thirds of another football field on each of the four sides. When you, when you watch uh, people going up to it on TV, when you see pictures of it uh, on the internet, nothing compares to standing at the base of it and looking up. You realize how massive these stones are and how big this structure is. It, it's amazing. Well, you think about something 450 feet tall. It's a skyscraper mm -hmm. and it's made out of stone. Yes. It's just amazing. Yes. Uh, to help people with comparison, I'd like to talk about the Hoover Dam. The Hoover Dam is 726 feet high, 660 feet thick, and 1,224 feet in length. But by mass, by tonnage, it's very similar to the pyramid. Hoover Dam is at like 6.6 .6 million tons. The Great Pyramid is estimated to weigh 5.9 million tons. Wow. So they're very similar in, in mass. Yeah, look at the size of that. And to think that was made to bury somebody, huh? All that effort, all that work to make that pyramid. Now, there are those, of course, that believe that those three pyramids that are out in the Giza Plateau, of course, line up with a star constellation. And yeah. And, and that is possible uh, because the ancients were very interested in astronomical things relating yep. to their understanding of God and creation. And their grasp of astronomy was brilliant. Yes, it was. They knew when eclipses were. Yes. They, they could calculate when an eclipse would happen. Yes. They set up systems of calendars. They set up math systems. Yes. These people, they oh, were yeah. not primitive. Yeah. They were brilliant. Yes. Here's what blows my mind about the Great Pyramid. Remember I threw out the question, how did they do it? We still don't know. So who's smarter? We don't know how they did it. We couldn't do it today the way they did it then. It's been there as far as we know, for at least 4,500 years. Windstorms, floods, earthquakes, whatever. You measure from one end of that 755 feet to the other end and put a plumb line there. From one end to the other end, it's off by one inch. 
one inch after 4,500 years. How in the world did they do it? I worked high rises in the city of Los Angeles for many, many years while I was in school in, in ministry. And uh, I can tell you that the high rises aren't plumbed that close in proximity as compared to what you're talking about with the pyramids. So ancient man was able to make a building and we don't know how he did it. It was able to last 4,500 years. And within that time, it's off one inch and 755 feet. How did they do it? They were highly intelligent. Yes. In fact, it is so stunning. There's actually a popular television series on TV called Ancient Aliens, mm. where the belief is this stuff is just so beyond the scope that man couldn't have done it. Aliens must have told him how to do it. <laughs> Worldview. They were too primitive to know how to do it, so aliens had to tell them to do it. Crazy. What? <laughs> <laughs> So I want to step forward from the Pyramid of Giza to another amazing structure that is still standing today, a couple thousand years old. So this building goes back to about the days of Jesus. It fell apart. They rebuilt it okay. re within a century or so after Jesus. So it goes back to roughly the days of Jesus. Okay. To this very day, and I want to have a picture up here, it's the world's largest unreinforced concrete dome. That's amazing. It's the world's largest to this very day. And it was built by the ancient Romans. Could you imagine going into a building, looking up and seeing a concrete ceiling and saying, how does it float there? Yeah. How, why doesn't it fall down? 2,000 years, earthquakes, storms, floods, wars, it's still standing. Hmm. That's amazing. And the ancient Romans built it. Everybody's heard of it. It's a pantheon. Oh. Yeah. Wow. This is a building that we think they made to honor a bunch of different gods. Mm -hmm. That's the prevailing theory on the building. Mm -hmm. All I know is the building still stands to this day. It's been in continuous use, by the way, for 2,000 years. Really? The pyramid has been looked at for thousands of years. This building has been used for 2,000 years. Now, how long is your house going to last? <laughs> Not that long. 50 years, 100 <laughs> years, if you're lucky. <laughs> Can you imagine 2,000 wow. years old? That's, that's amazing. Let me read you some bullet points on the history of the Pantheon and this large dome. It was originally built to honor Agrippa, who was Augustus's friend and general, who won the victory at the Battle of Actium over Antony and Cleopatra. So it was built to honor and remember the victory over Antony and Cleopatra, to give you a historical reference for it. Oh. That's when it was built or why it was built. As I said, it was rebuilt around 118 to 125 and redone and rededicated to the Emperor Hadrian. Um, the original dedication can be seen over the entrance to this day. And it says, Marcus Agrippa, son of Lucius, having been consul three times, made it. Huh. And it's still sitting there for anybody to read. You can see the lettering right there. Yeah, that's amazing. <laughs> Wow. The dome itself is 142 feet in diameter. Hmm. To give you, by comparison, the rotunda, the dome at the capital of the United States uh, White House, 96 feet. Wow. <laughs> so this is significantly larger. And, of course, the Capitol Dome was made with that other dome as an inspiration. Mm. So, in a sense, we replicated it, but not as magnificently. <laughs> <laughs> That word pantheon has two words you're probably familiar with. Pan, like Pan America. Mm -hmm. Pan means everything or all. Mm -hmm. And the word theo is in there. Theon, theos, a god, mm -hmm. all god mm -hmm. or all gods. Mm -hmm. So the idea is it was dedicated, a building dedicating many gods. You referenced something in a previous episode, and I want to quote the verse from Genesis 11.6. The Lord said, if as one people speaking the same language, they have begun to do this, then nothing they plan to do will be impossible for them. God states in Holy Scripture that man is mm -hmm. so brilliant mm -hmm. that anything we plan, we can accomplish. Yeah. When we work together. When we work together. And this was ancient man. And it's God separated us and made it harder for us to work mm -hmm. together. 
but language barriers are down, our civilizations are large, and the advances we are making in technology are just, you know, they, they basically are saying every year our data, you know, multiplies X percent. The knowledge of humanity, uh, how quickly our computers are changing, our oh, cameras are changing, our, yes. our televisions are changing. Mm -hmm. We've got screens now that bend. Heck with bendy screens, we got holograms. Sure. You know, it just, we, we can put monitors in our glasses. Yes. And they're talking about implanting thinking chips into people's heads, mm -hmm. making computers that can think. Yes. We've got computers on the battlefield. We've got drones. Mm -hmm. Nothing will be impossible to them. And it's a good thing that man was separated back in the Tower of Babel. Because ancient man was brilliant, modern man is brilliant, but our brilliance is marred by sin. Think of the mushroom cloud. Nothing is impossible for man. That's not necessarily a good thing. We have the ability and the technology to destroy our planet over and over and over. I wanted to do some research so I could quantify that for you. So let me read to you some facts that I found online. I'm not sure I want to hear this. It's scary. <laughs> Unless those days are shortened, mm -hmm. Yeshua said, no flesh would be saved. Right. So not only do we have the judgment of God pending, but man has the capability through war to destroy himself. And why haven't we? Why haven't we? God is being gracious. Mm -hmm. There are terrorists out there that do not value life. There are right. nuclear weapons running around. Let me give you an example of how much power we have. The United States of America has 18 Ohio-class submarines which carry nuclear missiles. Each submarine carries 1,000 times the destructive power of Hiroshima. Wow. 1,000 times. I can't even think on that scale. One website I visited said there are estimated to be 23,000 nuclear weapons in existence. We can destroy our planet with one angry push of a button. Our nuclear missiles can hit a target a thousand miles away in less than four minutes. <laughs> so basically within five minutes, the entire planet can be destroyed. Wow. Isn't Talk that about a great making piece of every news? moment count? Can you imagine, how do you defend against that? You can't. You can't. You can't. No, God's keeping us alive. It's de definitely not our patience, our, our self-preservation. Yeah, our goodness. Our, our goodness. sense of what is right. No. Within uh, our ability, within our brilliance, we have developed the ability to destroy ourselves. And it's as if God is pushing us back, keeping mm -hmm. us from doing it. Well, this is a fascinating conversation. Don't go away. We're going to come right back and we're going to continue talking about what man can do when they all work together for the good or for the bad. We'll see you in just a minute. GLC invites you to visit us on our Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash GLCTV. Here you can stay in touch with all of the latest GLC news along with daily scriptural inspirations, current specials in our bookstore, links to our newest shows, and online media plus articles from trusted sources. Feel free to drop us a message or a question by posting to our page. Please help us out and like our page by clicking on the thumbs up button. Don't delay. Drop by the GLC Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash GLCTV. We want to interact with you today. Welcome back to Rock Shovels and Manuscripts. I'm Rick, and this is Steve the Bummer. Because <laughs> you just left us on really not a cliff tamer. You took us off the cliff. So help us with this. <laughs> well, so humanity can destroy itself. Have a nice night. <laughs> In, I think you said less than five minutes, we have the ability to destroy the planet. A nuclear-tipped missile with a thousand times the power of the missiles that hit her, the bombs that were dropped on Hiroshima go a thousand miles in four minutes. Wow. So if somebody presses that button, it's all over. And it brings to my mind something that Jesus said. Let me read it for you. Matthew 24. For then there will be great distress, unequaled from the beginning of the world until now, and never to be equaled again. Mm. If those days had not been cut short, no one would survive. But for the sake of the elect, those days will be shortened. Mm. So Jesus is basically saying at the end, Humans will be wiped out unless God intervenes, but he will intervene. Wow. Yes. So our future is not looking so bright. Um, 
almost a parallel to the flood, which we've talked about just in the past episodes. Well, it's funny. On the God one... saves humanity. We're able to just been gone. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. It, because the intention of their hearts were wrong. Everything they were doing was wrong. God in his mercy floods the place, but ultimately to save us. Well, I didn't want to leave everybody on a sour note. We have the capacity to harm ourselves and destroy ourselves. But we also have significant inventions from the ancient world to modern times that impart life. Mm -hmm. I've got a friend who has recently received a device under his skin to take injections. And that device is connected to his arteries. So he no longer has to get injections in his skin because his veins have collapsed from all the injections. This device will sit under his skin. It's a port to receive injections. It's amazing. That is amazing. Ancient man also had amazing inventions that imparted mm -hmm. life. Let me talk to you about ancient Roman aqueducts. Great. Water is life. If you can bring water to a city, it can have hygiene. It can be clean. Mm -hmm. It can drink. When I know, I know of people today in parts of our world have to walk a mile or more mm -hmm. with a couple of buckets to go to a malaria crocodile infested water hole, which might be stalked by lions with a cobra route mm -hmm. to bring water back home. The ancient Romans, I've heard it said that Rome was serviced with more water per citizen than New York is today. Wow. <laughs> right? Were That's they ancient? Amazing. Were they primitive? They had it better in some respects than modern man does today. Now, I'm not saying that every home in ancient Rome had a tap and a, a shower and, sure. a, and a bathroom, but the volume of water that came into Rome 2,000 years ago dwarfs the volume of water that goes into our major cities today, or at least surpasses it. Wow. There were 11 separate aqueducts that supplied the city of Rome with water, and they weren't all built at the same time. They were built over a 500-year span. The first one, the Aqua Pia, was built in 312 BC. So I'm just showing people different aqueducts so they get an idea of what aqueducts That's look amazing. like. That's amazing. These aren't all necessarily Roman aqueducts, but these are still standing today. Mm -hmm. The Aqua Pia, the first one that serviced Rome, was built in 312 BC. The Aqua Novus stretched almost 60 miles. Wow. These, um, these aqueducts were brilliant. They would carry water from a higher source to a lower source. But they designed it so that the incline was like an inch. Because if it's too shallow, the water won't come. Mm -hmm. If it's too steep, it'll come too fast. Yes. So can you imagine like a 60-mile aqueduct over valleys and hills with a steady one-inch decline? Now, that's incredible <laughs> engineering. Yes, it is. Incredible it's, engineering. It's unbelievable engineering. Yes. So, nearly 200 cities within the empire were supplied with aqueducts. No other, cent no other civilization had water like this until modern times. And this was 2,000 years ago. They had, ancient Roman cities had aqueducts. They had underground sewers. They had indoor running water. They had heated baths. This is like modern living. They had everything modern man has, you know? It was arranged differently, but it was preferred to be arranged that way. Instead of everybody having a bath in their own house, they had public baths. So you would go like to a gym. You'd exercise, get a massage, hang out with the guys, and then they had this process for bathing. You know, you'd go into a, a tepid room, and you'd go into a hot room, you'd go into a cold room. After the hot room, you'd get all sweaty, and you'd scrape off the stuff, and that was their system, their social system, their, clen their cleanliness system. And that's not that different than what we do today. No, we go into a, a gym, that's we sit right. into a hot room, we talk with the guys, we go take a cold sauna. shower, and we come right. home, you know? <laughs> Very similar. Right. I had pointed out in a previous episode the ancient battery. That totally blew my mind. And mine. I think the aqueducts are cool, but they don't blow my mind. I really got a charge out of it. <laughs> I really did. <laughs> well, here's another one okay. that I hope will blow your mind. It's the Antikythera mechanism. It's an ancient computer. It's an analog computer. That means it's, it's physical. It's not it's, digital. It's mechanical. It's mechanical, yeah. yeah. But when you think about what it does and how it was made and how they knew what they knew to make it, 
it's totally amazing. It was recovered in 1900 wow. from a shipwreck off of the Greek island Antikythera. It predicts astronomical positions and eclipses, and it's over 2,000 years old. It dates 100 to 150 years before. And this is what they think it would have looked like. Yes. It had at least seven different functions. It had at least 30 bronze gears. So you think of a pocket watch today that you could wind and put mm -hmm. in your pocket, mm -hmm. and that, that is much more complex than a modern pocket watch. Much more complex. Let me tell you some of the things it did. It would tell you when the next eclipse was and how to find it in the sky. <laughs> That's amazing. What makes this even more amazing is that the ancient calendar that it was based on is different than our calendar today. We have 365 day years. They didn't. As their months changed to line up with the sun, their day lengths changed. So this thing had to calculate yeah. the days, the months, the years, and the centuries to be able to predict when the eclipses were. So it could tell you the date, it could tell you the week, the month, and the year, depending on where you turned the dial. It was brilliant. We don't have anything like it today. If we want to know this, sure, we go to Google and Google knows all. But somebody had to program that information into Google. So they knew this data. They programmed it into this machine, but somebody had to make it. So you've got on the face, on the dial of this thing, you know, all this information, all these numbers, all these dates, all these times, and several layers of those, and several, you've even got a globe that moves around to show you what, you know, whether it's in the light or in the dark. Are you kidding? I'm not kidding. This thing is and amazing. And when was this made? This is made 100 to 150 years BC. <laughs> so much for the earth being flat. Now, now, the globes that I'm referring to, I'm not sure if they're lunar. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's the lunar globe. Mm -hmm. But to show you the dark side of the moon, when the moon comes around, when it goes yeah, it's into... it's amazing still. Yeah, it's just brilliant. Over 2,000 years old. They dug it out of the water and they went, what's this? Wow, when they analyzed it, ancient man was not inferior to modern man. In many, many respects, he was superior to modern man. Mm -hmm. How many people on the planet today could make that device? You could probably count them in a, on a hand. Very few people. Maybe a few astronomers, but. This is blowing my mind and reminding me of a temple in Egypt where they were actually doing, and I don't know how accurate, but they were actually doing uh, surgical procedures for men who weren't able to produce children and able to show before and after results of sperm counts. Now, you think about that in ancient Egypt. So they had the ability to, uh, to magnify uh, what they were looking at, to do surgical procedures. Yeah, uh, you look at, um, you know those Nazca lines? Yes. You've heard yes, about those? Sure, of course. There is a spider. And on that spider, on the Nazca lines, is a piece of its anatomy that can only be seen through a microscope. So... How is it that ancient man saw it? Again, ancient man was not inferior to us. In many ways, he was superior. They invented things that we don't know how they invented. They forgot things that we relearned mm -hmm. and consider ourselves more brilliant for having yes. done so. Yeah. Let's move on. I've okay. got so uh, much more. Um, Abu Simbel. I don't know if you were there. I have. <laughs> so, it's an amazing place. Isn't it Across, yes. Amazing place. Twin temples were uh, originally carved out of the mountainside during the reign of mm -hmm. Pharaoh Ramses the Great, supposedly 13th century BC, mm -hmm. as a lasting monument to himself and Queen Nefertiri. Mm -hmm. The Great Temple stands 90 feet, I mean 98 feet high and 115 feet long with four seated colossi, that was the first one we looked at, flanking the entrance, two to each side, depicting Ramses II on his throne, each one 65 feet tall. Beneath those giant figures, and I'm just reading the statistics here, are smaller statues, but still bigger than life-size, depicting Ramses conquering enemies, specifically the Nubians, the Libyans, and the Hittites. 
Okay, let me tell you something that I found fascinating about that place. And if we'll we'll pull that picture back up okay. of Abu Simbel, and when the actually one time a year in the, the Temple of Abu Simbel, one time a year, one time a year, yeah. the sun shines all the way through to the very very back, all the way through where you're seeing that opening, to what's called the Sanctuary of Sanctuaries. And there were the... By the way, the Holy of Holies. That's right. Uh -huh. Exactly right. Mm -hmm. In fact, same dimensions, actually, too. I, that I didn't know. Yeah. <laughs> and, and so all the way in the very back, you have the four gods lined up. They all get light, except one time a year, the God of Darkness, one time <laughs> a year, has the light shine through. And it's, I believe it's for the uh, birthday or something, a coronation date or something like that for one of the pharaohs. But to line that up, to get that right, it's amazing. Yes, Absolutely they, amazing. They, they would have to have been able to calculate the position of the sun yes. on a specific day of the year. Yes. They were brilliant. They could do those brilliant. things. Brilliant. Us, we go to Google. <laughs> 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 now, one of the cool things about Abu Simbel is it, it's immensity. It, it's, it's just stunning. Yes, it is. We have something in our country that's also stunning. We have Mount Rushmore. Mm -hmm. I want to compare Abu Simbel Okay. with Mount Rushmore. Let me give you some statistics off of Mount Rushmore. From the top of the head to the end of the chin, 60 feet. What did I just say about these statues here at Abu Simbel? The temple itself was 98 feet, but Ramses, 65 feet. So Ramses is bigger than the head at Mount Rushmore. Th the nose, 20 feet. <laughs> wow. It's a big honk and schnoz. That is. Mouth, 18 feet wide. Eyes, 11 feet wide. The height of Mount Rushmore, 500 feet. Wow. So, give you an idea of what modern man wow. could do versus what ancient man can do. There's no improvement. Right. Ancient right. man was able to do what modern man can do mm -hmm. and vice versa. Mm -hmm. Except for, I told you, we have Mount Rushmore. Mm -hmm. They have Abu Simbel, the greater temple, the lesser temple, the Sphinx, the pyramids, and on and on and on. As you go throughout the Middle Eastern Empire, you see more and more and more. Well, we're going to be talking more about ancient technologies next week. So we'll see you then. This episode was produced by and for God's Learning Channel. If you're enjoying this series, your financial support will help us keep this program on the air. Simply send your contribution to God's Learning Channel, P.O. Box 61000, Midland, Texas 79711-1000. Or log on to our website at www.glc.us.com and donate using PayPal. Please be sure to designate which program your contribution is intended to support. Thank you for helping us make unique quality programming a reality. Order your copy of this program from the GLC Bookstore by calling the numbers or visiting the website on your screen. Please include the program number when ordering.